Thank you for joining me for the continuation of our series on ARDL models. Please, before you watch this video, make sure you have watched the video on how to specify ARDL models. On the screen, you can see the generalized form of the ARDL PQ model. And I remembered I said in the previous video that the P's are associated with the lags for the dependent variable, which is the lag of the dependent variable, and the Q's are associated with the lags for the regressors. The P and Q's, they may not necessarily be the same lag lengths. They can be different. Also, YT can be a vector. And the simplest explanation for a vector in this case is that each of the variables in the model can become a dependent variable. That is the approach I am going to use for this um, tutorial. I have three variables in this model, the log of MVA, the log of IMP, and real exchange rate. And I'll be taking each of them when I'm estimating the bounce test for cointegration. So let us have a recap of what the bounce test for cointegration is all about. The null hypothesis is that the coefficients of the long-run equation are all equal to zero against the alternative that these coefficients are not equal to zero. So take a look at the specification of the bounce test for each of these variables. I have also color-coded it so that you can easily identify the dependent variable the lag, and also the regressors that make up the model. One thing you will observe is that the coefficients of the... One thing you will observe is that the equations for the long run, which are these ones, they do not have the difference operators. So all these ones are the long run equation. So if you will observe, they do not have the difference operators. As against the short run equations, these are the short run equations, and they have the difference operators. So you can see. So anywhere you see the difference operator in the equation, those are short-run uh, variables. And also the dependent variable will always have its own difference operator too when you are um, specifying the bounce test for cointegration. So this is how you specify them for each of the variable. So having known all these, let us go to Stata and look at what we have to do today. So here it is, I have launched data. You can see my data in the upper right corner of the variable section. And in my usual practice, I have my do file and my log files ready. It is always good for you to have a do file and a log file. You can always rerun or modify your analysis for other studies. You don't have to be typing these commands all the time. Let me now show you what I have in my data editor. Let me show you the variables that we are using today. The data span is from 1981 to 2014, and I'll be using these three variables, the log of MVA, the real exchange rates, and the log of imports. Each of them will be a dependent variable in the bounce test for cointegration regression. Before I start, I need to issue this command for Stata to prepare it to run time series analysis, and this is this command, T set year. If you are using a monthly data, yours will be T set month. If it's a quarterly data, it will be T set quarterly. So because I have annual data, my command is T set year. I click on run. So this is data response. I have a time variable year from 1981 to 2014, making it um, 30 year, 34 years observation. So Stata now is ready to run my time series analysis. I have all the commands already written out here. I will just run them. But before I start, I need to identify the appropriate lag structure for this model by running this command, the VASOC command. You can see it's all spelled out here. I click on Run. Here is the output. Across all criterion specifications, all of them chose one lag. So one lag is the optimal lag structure for the model. Like I said, I've already written out all the commands. Although I've indicated a maximum of two lags here for AIC information criterion to use. So I've indicated two lags here. So I'm going to click on run. I'm going to run the ARDL model. You can see it's highlighted here. Afterwards, I will extract the optimal values for each of the variable. You can see it here. Then I will run the bounce test for cointegration command. You can see it's highlighted here. Afterwards, I can now run some diagnostics by checking whether the errors are serially correlated with the Dobbin-Watson or Bush-Godfrey test. You can see the command here decide to test for heteroscedasticity 
by running the white test you can see the command here again i may decide to check for model stability by running the custom square test you can also see the command here so i've written out all the commands i highlight all of them and i click run all of them are highlighted so that's one of the best advantages of having a do file you write out all the commands and click on run so here you can see the results the first part here is for the ARDL model that is the result for the optimal lag structure for each of the variables this is the outcome it means that the dependent variable which is the log of NVA will take lag 1 the log of import will take lag 0 real exchange rate will take lag 0 it is this lag structure that I now plug into the bounce test for co-integration test you can see it here lags 100 zero zero. so here is the results for the bounce test you can see the F statistics here is 1.520 and we know what the null hypothesis is if the F statistics is lower than the IO series it means there is no co-integration if the F statistics is higher than the I1 series, I1 bound, it means there is co-integration. And we are going to check the calculated F statistics against the Pesaran, Shane and Smith 2001 critical values. You can see all the critical values spelled out here. So just look at 1.50 and you see that it's clearly below the IO bound. Not even close. So when the log of manufacturing value added is the dependent variable, there is no co-integration among the variables. So let's check out some diagnostics. These are the commands. For the W. Watson statistic is 1.8, so there is no serial correlation. Confirming that with Bush Godfrey test at 0 0.5951, there is no serial correlation. And let's look at the white test for heteroskedasticity. So using the white test, this model is suffering from heteroskedasticity and lastly let's look at the custom square test and see whether our model is stable for this custom square test it lies within the five percent boundary so the model is stable is only suffering from heteroskedasticity so that would be another tutorial not today let us run for the real exchange rates and let us see what we have just like I did for the log of manufacturing output these are the commands for the real exchange rates same thing i will just click on run when the real exchange rate is a dependent variable in this analysis on the upper part here is a regression for the ardl model here you can see the command for the optimal lag structure and in this case the real exchange rate will take lag two while the log of mva and the log of imports will take lag zero so i have plugged in this lag structure into the test for bounce co-integration so you can see there and this is the outcome of the bounce test the f statistics is 3.10 which is clearly below the io bound so again there is no co-integration when the real exchange rate is a dependent variable let's go down a bit to check for diagnostics from the w watson statistic with 1.20 the model is suffering from positive serial correlations which is confirmed by the bush Godfrey test for autocorrelation. That hypothesis is rejected, so this model is suffering from serial correlation. Again, let's check for heteroskedasticity. In this case, we reject the hypothesis of homoskedasticity. Kusum graph. Well, it's good to know that the model is stable. The model is stable, but the errors are serially correlated and heteroskedastic. Again, there will be another tutorial, not today. Okay, let us run the analysis when the log of import is a dependent variable. The syntax or the commands are written here. The commands are written out already. I highlight and I click on run. You can see the result when the log of import is a dependent variable. Upper part here is the output for the ARDL model. Again, having extracted the lag length, we can see that the log of imports will take lag 1, the log of NVA will take lag 0, and the real exchange rate will take lag 0. I have plugged in the lag structure into the command for the bounce test. 
So here is the bounce test result, and we are going straight to the F value. At 5.861, it is higher than the I1 series or the I1 bound. So in this case, we reject the null hypothesis of no cointegration. So it, when the log of imports is a dependent variable, there is cointegration among the variables from what we can see from the value of the F statistic. Straight on to checking for diagnostics. Dobbin Watson statistic is 2.1, gives no evidence of serial correlation, which is confirmed by the Bush Grophy statistic of 0 0.58. So there is no serial correlation in this model. That is good to know. Heteroscedasticity is also not present. Looking at the Y test, so we cannot reject the null of homoscedasticity. This is also good to know. Here is a Kusum graph. We can see it lies comfortably within the 5% statistical significance level. So the model is stable. So this is the table showing the outcome of the bounce test that we just did in Stata. I have copied it all out here neatly on the table. So again, when the dependent variable was log of NVA, these are the F this is the F statistic and the T statistic. The outcome is that there is no cointegration. We are simply going to estimate the short run model, which is the ARDL model. The same thing will be for the real exchange rate because there is no cointegration, so only the short run model will be estimated. The exception to the rule was when the log of import is a dependent variable. There is cointegration in that equation, so we go ahead to estimate the error correction model. So once there is no cointegration, there's no point you estimating an error correction model. You should only estimate the short-run model, which is the ARDL model. So this is how you construct your equations if there is no cointegration. This is just a short-run equation. You can see it here. The different operators are there indicating short-run. So once there is no cointegration, this is what should be specified. And if there is cointegration, this is what should be specified. You can see here is a combination of the short-run equation and the error correction representation. This one captures the long-run relationship among the variables in the model. Lambda here is the speed of adjustment parameter and it often comes with a negative sign. That will also depend on the relationship among the variables. The ECT here is the error correction term and it is a residual from the regression of the long-run equation. And this is a mathematical formation for the error correction term. You can see it here. I've also spelled out what theta is. Theta here is a long run parameter, while the short run dynamics are simply the A1i, A2i, and the A3i's. I hope this tutorial has been helpful. If you need the data set, click on the link to the video description. And if you need the do file, send me your comments with your email address, and I'll forward the do file to you so that you can modify for your own analysis. Stay with me on the next series where I show you how to estimate both the short run and the long run error correction models. Subscribe for more videos from Crunch Econometrics. Send us your comments on how you want us to improve the quality of our tutorials.